seasons move on and winter comes. For some, first snows are a time for fun. For others, snow and icy blasts bring annoyance. But in ordinary times, we contend, good-natured or grudging. And we sense little threat, little peril to our daily existence. Even when snows accumulate with the season and transportation sometimes is slowed, we usually can deal with the problems in fairly routine ways. There is the usual access to fuel, the other necessities of life. Community lifelines remain intact. But experience tells us it is foolhardy to assume nature is always controllable. Blizzard warning for the entire state. Once, twice, perhaps more often in each season, a major winter storm disrupts our lives. With surprising ferocity, the wintry assault begins, shocks us with its incapacitating force. From little more than one day's opening to its close, we may be reduced to virtual helplessness. The threat is realized. The peril is real. Our lives may depend on how we now contend. Planning, preparedness, caution, they're all essential. And sometimes man can't cope. Surviving the winter storm are few, and they're simple, but they do require forethought and prior action, and then rational behavior during the emergency. Therein lies the way to survival in the winter storm. Hello, I'm Peter Collins. A major winter storm can present a serious threat to us and our families, but fortunately there are many simple, practical things that can be done to reduce the danger. Winter storm safety rules are based on the premise that until nature's energies have run their course, and even thereafter, we may be on our own for many hours, perhaps days, depending upon your own resources for survival. Doesn't it make good sense to prepare before trouble comes? A first essential is making sure you have some basic supplies and equipment. You may already have some on hand, and you'll probably have to add a few. It also takes spreading the word about winter safety to everybody in the family and to anyone else who will listen. Because finally, it's winter safety know-how that can see you through. Remember, you may not be able to get to the store after roads are impassable. Adjust your shopping list beforehand to stock enough food and other supplies for your family for a few days. Select foods that don't require refrigeration or cooking. After all, Power may fail, and with it, both refrigerators and freezers, and the electric stove. An alternate way to cook foods on hand and to heat water is helpful. Look at this heater. Emergency heating may be wise, too, for the furnace in your home may not operate if electrical power is cut off. Electricity goes off. If you don't already have one, invest in a dependable battery-powered radio. It may be your only contact with the outside world. Be sure batteries are fresh. It's good, too, to have some spares. If you live in the countryside, lay in an extra supply of fuel for lanterns and camp stoves. Medical help may be a long time coming, and so it's wise to have a fully stocked first aid kit on hand. If special medication is required by someone in your home, arrange for an extra supply through your doctor or pharmacist. These are the basics for the home, and there are other provisions that you'll see are wise when you consider winter safety in light of the way you live. 
If you have pets or livestock, you'll need to make special arrangements for their care and safety. In the home, your health and welfare may depend upon the fuel supply. If you depend upon trucks for fuel delivery, remember that they may not be able to get through. Arrange for emergency heating in case of power failure. If you have a fireplace, lay in a supply of wood. If your heating source is a camp stove or space heater, be sure it's in good operating condition. Emergency heaters in particular often create serious hazards. Be careful in operating any open flame stove in a closed space, both from the standpoint of fire hazard and carbon monoxide. Charcoal burners, too, can be deadly. If your water supply depends on electrical pumps, power failure may cut off this vital resource. So it's essential to stockpile clean water in closed containers, enough at moderate rates of consumption for everyone in your family for a few days. Keeping simple firefighting tools in good order is an excellent idea any season, but most particularly in winter. Choose a dry chemical portable extinguisher in preference to vaporizing liquid types that may generate dangerous fumes in small confined spaces. Or have a garden hose handy where water supply is assured and add sand and shovel and a ladder. With these and firefighting methods you can learn at your local fire company, you should be able to control small fires when no other help is available. Also, be sure everyone in the household is trained to forestall fire in the first place. No matter where you live, fire becomes an even greater hazard in the winter storm because you may not be able to count on outside help. A good place to start is a general house cleaning to remove combustibles, especially if they're near sources of heat. Check your furnace or other heating equipment for faulty, cracked, or rusted pipes. Be sure flues are free of excess soot or other blockage. Check electrical appliances and wiring for frayed or loose connections, possible causes of short circuits and fire. You'll find that none of these preparations cost a lot or take much time. The same is true for the second home for many of us, the family car, upon which we depend so much. Certain preparations are needed here, too. Check the ignition system. Battery. Cooling system. Antifreeze. Fuel system. Lubrication, winter grade oil, the heater. Be sure brakes are in good order. Uneven braking leads to swerving and loss of control on slippery snow or ice. Install snow tires. If you're out in the winter storm, you may be stopped by snow and want to run the engine and heater to stay warm. So be especially concerned about the exhaust system. See that it's tight, front to back, with no holes except the outlet. You'll need maximum traction, so check tires for tread. Be sure the defroster works. Replace worn wiper blades. Check all lights. Be sure to check the dome light, too. This little light could save your life if you get stalled in deep snow. Finally, to keep water out of your gas tank and avoid fuel line freeze-up, fill the tank reasonably often. When winterizing is completed, continue the job of preparing for the winter storm by putting an emergency kit in your car, just as you do in your home. No matter where you travel, 
One or more of the following in your car may help assure safety and comfort. Tire chains, battery booster cables, a shovel, tow cables, a sack of sand, windshield scraper, and a flashlight or signal lights. We've gone through these preparations in detail because experience tells us we should be equipped and prepared for the worst. Consider for a moment what might be involved. You may hear a forecast of a blizzard, low temperatures, strong winds driving large amounts of snow, much of it in fine powdery particles whipped up in such quantities that visibility may be only a few yards. Blizzard warnings mean winds of at least 35 miles an hour with considerable falling or blowing snow expected for an extended period of time. Severe blizzard warnings mean things will be much worse. A storm of extreme proportions, winds of at least 45 miles an hour, great density of falling or blowing snow, and temperatures of 10 degrees or lower. Under such conditions, visibility is practically zero. In weather like this, you can lose all sense of direction a few steps from your house or car and wander aimlessly. Exertion, fatigue, extreme cold can bring death, ironically, even if comparative safety is near at hand. But even when the effects aren't that bad, you can still suffer physical injury in a short time. Arctic experts have devised the chill index you hear mentioned on the weather forecast. This chart displays the cooling power of air on exposed flesh. And here's how you use it. Starting with a 20 degree temperature of a blizzard, read down to a wind speed of 30 miles an hour. The equivalent temperature is minus 20 degrees. Or take a severe blizzard temperature of 10 degrees and a wind speed of 40 miles an hour. The result, minus 35 degrees. The cooling power of that order presents an extreme challenge to our bodies. And permanent damage from frostbite to exposed, unprotected flesh is not only possible, but can happen quickly. Lungs, too, can be damaged by breathing such intensely cold air. If you must spend much time outdoors, dress accordingly. The layered look is recommended. Loose-fitting, lightweight, warm clothing applied in several layers. The layered approach entraps insulating air warmed by body heat, the best protection against cold. If you're active, outer layers can be removed to prevent perspiring and subsequent chill. Outer garments should be tightly woven, water repellent and hooded. The hood should protect much of your face and should also cover your mouth so you'll breathe warmed air. Gloves are best for driving, but when you're not driving, mittens snug at the wrist provide better protection. The assault by extreme cold, especially when accompanied by high winds, makes it clear that we should stay indoors unless we're in good physical condition. If you must go outside, be careful not to overexert. While it's always advisable to complete any traveling before a major winter storm arrives, some travel may be necessary. Use public transportation if available. Otherwise, treat even short trips by automobile as serious business. Check the radio or TV for the latest weather information before you leave. Plan your travel for daylight hours. Select both primary and alternate routes. Try not to travel alone, and be sure to let someone know your destination and schedule. Yeah, we're on our way. Fill your gas tank before starting out, especially if you're heading for open country. A full tank helps prevent formation of condensation, which causes gas line freeze-up. Then drive carefully, defensively.
If you get into trouble, that basic survival kit may help. Shoveling snow is as hard on a person as ditch digging. It's an open invitation to severe exhaustion or other serious health problems. The moment the storm exceeds your limitations or severely tests them, head for shelter, any that's available, immediately. Keep in mind that disorientation comes quickly under these conditions. And being lost in open country during a blizzard is almost certain death. If, despite all you can do, you are trapped by a blizzard, marooned with no help in sight or near, you are now vulnerable and your survival may depend upon all the careful preparations you made before winter came and upon how successfully you meet the danger. Realization that you are in serious trouble may come slowly. When you understand the gravity of the situation, don't panic, but activate these primary rules for blizzard survival. Tie a bright cloth to your door handle or antenna. Remember that your car provides shelter. Stay with it. You are more likely to be found at your car. It's easier to spot. Then as you wait for rescue, remember that wind-driven snow or freezing wet snow can completely seal the passenger compartment. Run the motor and heater sparingly. Beware the gentle killers, lack of oxygen and carbon monoxide. Be sure you keep a supply of fresh air in the car. Open only the downwind window for ventilation, so wind doesn't drive engine fumes into the car. It is now that you will appreciate having checked your exhaust system virtually the only defense you have while the engine is running against carbon monoxide. Another thing, don't just sit. Exercise. Clap your hands. Move your arms and legs vigorously. Stay alive. As time goes on, you may need rest. If someone is with you, sleep in shifts. Take turns staying awake, keeping alert to danger or to the arrival of help. Listen to the radio for information and instructions. However bleak your prospects at any moment, remember you're not alone. Spread to southern sections in the next several hours. Over 12 inches of When darkness falls, turn the dome light on. It can help rescue crews find you. From the first moment the National Weather Service detected conditions leading to a major storm, State and local governments in the affected area began activating emergency plans. This is civil preparedness in action. A winter storm can paralyze an area of several states, an entire region. Transport and communications are disrupted or knocked out. Power is cut off. Suddenly, thousands of individuals like yourself may need help. Routine response is no longer sufficient. Extraordinary measures become necessary. There is no time now to plan. Plans were made and tested long ago, before the winter storm struck. The result is emergency operations now activated by local governments and as needed by the state and by federal agencies. 
In the winter storm emergency, your local civil preparedness director acts for the mayor, city manager, county commissioner, or other local chief executive in directing the use of community resources. These resources include other local government services, police, fire, rescue, communications, public works, and private sector help as needed to save lives and property. Utility crews, fuel oil handlers, and others providing essential services are all part of the coordinated emergency action. The director may call in volunteer groups and request military assistance. His planning for emergencies may have included acquisition of surplus federal property. The local government may have matched federal funds to purchase emergency communication equipment or to build an emergency operating center, provide the facilities, equipment, and the trained and experienced people needed to take immediate action to bring rescue and relief to combat the winter storm. Highway 57, north on Highway 57. Yes, sir. Thank you. Station 2 to Portable 29. Station 2 to 29. We have a stranded motorist north on Highway 57 near the Star Farm. Rescue for you as an individual assumes special significance. You may not see it as part of emergency operations on the grand scale, involving perhaps many thousands of other individuals who serve out of duty or simply the desire to help their fellow man. There will be many personal emergencies such as yours. Every citizen, therefore, as an obligation to prepare for the winter storm. Now, while there's time for action, consider whether you and your family are prepared for an emergency. Is there sufficient food, fuel, water, and medicine to survive for several hours or a few days without outside assistance? Are the members of your household knowledgeable about the effects of extreme cold and wind and how to protect against injury? Are you prepared to guard against fire and to fight it on your own if one starts? Are your automobiles and possibly other vehicles winterized and equipped with winter survival kits? Does everyone in your family know how to prepare for travel during winter storms and how to survive if trapped far from help? As I said earlier, the rules for surviving the winter storm are few and they're simple, but they require forethought, prior action, and reasoned behavior in an emergency. Observe the rules for safety 
and multiply your chances for survival in the winter storm.